Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO Last Days of Europe, and we're playing as a nice, beautiful Hyperborea. Last time, we made sure that Velomir became the leader of our country, but we must continue with more focuses. We have the Clash of Gods, of course, but right now we have finished Onwards to Glory, and enter the world, we could do that. Let's go and do Blast Factories, though. The factory in its current state is a wretched example of the moral decay of modernity. The worker spends his days in a mindless doldrum, untouched by the teachings of his ancestors and the gods. This state of affairs is a remnant to the days of Jewish control over industry, designed to sap the vitality of the <clears throat> Aryan man and disconnect them from their heritage in order to continue modernization according to the principles of the race. Our race. We will have to restructure the factory system, creating something never before seen in the history of industrialization. Gone are the days of dull, alienating toil. Priests stationed within each one will ensure that the factory is a center of indoctrination, as well as labor, in addition to ensuring that each one complies with the principles of the ancestral faith. Which we do get four whole civilian factories. Very nice. Doing pretty well in our deficit. GDP is not looking bad. Growth is pretty good as well. Not too bad. Can only get 1.99 political power every day. Good lord, that is not very much. But that's okay. It is July 30th, almost August 1968. And we have to wait until 69, nice, to go to war, which is totally fine. We have many focuses to do, and we still need to do our regional development stuff, so it's fine. Hire foreign instructors. Yeah, reluctant conscripts going up by five a month. Reluctant conscripts. Disgruntled veterans would be better to get, yeah. That actually hurts our max planning, too. That's not good. But next up. A working body, a working soul, an unnecessary concern for the lives of one's inferiors is a sign of weakness and decadence that has toppled many civilizations. It was always the way of our ancestors to work with their slaves to the bone, and as their lives meant nothing when compared to the glory of the Aryan nation, that said, there is a limit. A starving slave is a weak laborer, and the nation cannot afford to lose too many of the millions of hands that built its monuments and fuel its war machine. Provisions, the bare minimum, will be distributed to our armies of servants. This is necess This is necessity, not mercy. But they should nevertheless be grateful. Work invigorates the soul, and with these supplies, they may yet toil for longer. Unlimited workday, nice. Less stability, less growth. Well, quite a bit less growth, but more output, good. As it should be. Pretty good. Anything here? Cool. I won't slash spending yet, but let's go and do the Apples of Perun. The legends, legends of the ancients say the god Perun possessed golden apples and became lightning in order to annihilate his enemies. In these degenerate old days, we cannot hope that our salvation will come in the form of divine intervention instead. We must seek to harness Perun's power through other means for the sake of modern development. Electrification must be the nation's first priority. It will drastically enhance our economic capacity and reconnect us with the will of the gods. The combination of modern technology and ancient wisdom is truly unbeatable, and unlike the decadent nations of the West, we will not waste our newfound capacity on slaves. We get four, five whole more military factories. Very good. That takes all 25 days to do. That's totally fine with me. Increase it. Almost five billion in terms of deficit. Minus five billion, I should say. Very nice. 20 days left. Embrace the willing. Do we have anything here? No, that's be fine. So, embrace the willing. Even with the final victory of the true Aryan government, the remnants of the Judeo-Bolshevik indoctrination still pollute the minds of our populace. Many people still distrust our new regime, treasonously refusing to follow the will of the high priest before obliterating them utterly. It may be useful to consider giving incentives for serving the will of the state. It shall be broadcast far and wide over our territory. Those who collaborate with the Brotherhood before their peers can expect superior quarters and slaves benefiting or befitting their status as enlightened Aryan citizens. Those who are too late to accept our very generous offer will get nothing at all, ensuring that before too long, the people will fall over one another to be the first to do our bidding. Immigration law becomes open immigration, and industrial expertise shall improve quite a bit. Good. Very, very good. 19 days, not bad. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll get this one done first, infantry and tank, and we actually have free military factories. What do we need? The planes to reach the heavens. Fighters are cool and all. I prefer cast, though. There you go. Are we making more civ factories? Very good. Actually, ooh, we only have 29. We we're already integrating all these states. The next one will be done was Orenburg, which would be nice. We have so much manpower. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. We have Vyatka Vodka. Nice. And look at that. This I love the poverty. Everything is going up. Even poverty is getting better under the true Aryan race. Of course, poverty is going to get better. Of course. Of course. After this, uh, motorized. Uh, we can do that. Let's grab some support weapons. Five. Goad the unbelievers. Even our most sincere rewards are not enough for 
certain treasonous elements of the population. They spit in our emissaries, lynch the collaborators among their communities, and turn away our priests' guidance. Many cling incorrigibly onto their identity as Russians or Soviets, an ex existential threat to our fledgling empire. Despite our hopes, it is clear that these people cannot be saved. They've they will have to be turned by force. Once again, our slavers will roam the countryside, subjugating unruly populations and permanently reminding them of who the betters are. If they refuse to understand our ideals, then we will teach them again in the universal language of force. Unbelievers to the factories, natural spirit, more construction speed, output, and dockyard output as well. It is time that we shall begin now to c convince or correct our divisions into becoming the true Ubermensch. We should have enough guns, enough artillery, enough of everything to succeed. Actually, no, screw it. Just convert everyone. Very, very good. It sounds like my cat is calling myself outside. Please give me one moment. My apologies about that. Cool. Oh, what can we do here? Ah, oh, stuff down here. That's not bad. Invest in construction. 15% more construction speed for 45 days. It's okay. More stability, I really want that, but we're going to get even higher, more foreign instructors. We might take this one next, though, after that. Go the unbelievers and all march to glory. Intermission to, subs to subsume the will of the masses. Beneath our boot to the will of the gods, we have succeeded gloriously. Though these initial opponents of our rule were tempted by the promise of rewards within the system, those who remain obstinate were crushed and incorporated into the servant classes. The enemy, or the economy, roars their life, the incorporation of priests into the factories, synthesizing our ancestral faith with the wonders of modern technology. Now that the economy is in order, we must head forward. Subjugating our own population is not enough. For the alien race to survive and prosper, the whole world must be ours to dominate. Our prior development has only been a minuscule step on a long and arduous march to glory. Output and more output. Nice. Cool. I heard all the music, or was like, I forget exactly what tune was. It was like Silent Night, so or something like that. So, I wanted to make sure that we could actually hear that, which I hopefully will remember whenever we reunify all of Russia under Hyperborea. That we, I will pause the music as well, so we can actually hear what the unifying song is. So, sixty-eight. Oh, we're getting close to sixty-nine. Nice. Poverty, ooh, it gives even better growth and better poverty rate. I've got to do that one. I've got to do that one. And then we'll go with more equipment stuff or stuff like, yeah, equipment, not expertise. Into the role, though. Through sheer air and tenacity, our brothers have achieved what many small minds thought to be a mere fantasy and secured our brotherhood's place as a dominant power in West Russia. Although it is the fact that much of the world is still corrupted by the sinister Judean influence, it would still be prudent to begin making our first forays into international community and make our voices heard. With their meteoric meteoric successes in uniting the region. The nations of the world will surely have no choice but to start taking us seriously. Diplomats of good Aryan stock will be set out for foreign nations around the globe with the objective of getting our name out there and making sure that the world knows that the Brotherhood is here and means business. No longer will Rus Russia be marked on maps as a blank no man's land. The Brotherhood's triumphs will be acknowledged whether the world likes it or not. Political power? Great. We're going to need that once we conquer all these people over here. Do we seriously already made everyone here 30, 40 combat? Oh, these guys are only 40 combat. Oh, you're the Ubermensch. But the Ubermensch needs to be actually more Ubermensch than that. Actually, you know what? Convert these guys back. Because we did not make these guys Ubermensch yet. I called them Ubermensch, but we didn't have enough power then to do so. Nice. Support anti-air, that's nice and all, but... Okay, so let's go and do this. Half. Become good, great. You know what? Just, I'll let all of you guys do this. Happy 1969, everyone. All right, it's time. Prepare for war. 
Cold days, unfortunately, by going by the recent actions, it has seemed that all hope for peace with the West Siberian People's Republic has been dashed. In an announcement from TMN, the West Siberian state has claimed that we are an illegitimate state that stands in the way to the path to reunify all of Russia following this declaration of hostility. They have expelled all of our citizens within their borders. As the military starts to mobilize and clouds circle the horizon, it seems that our conflict of interest shall be settled on the battlefield rather than at the negotiating table. We got ready about this one. Go right ahead. It's basically the exact same exact thing. Doesn't even matter, just do whatever we can around here. Good. We must be prepared. 0.55, not bad. Into the world, we shall do that soon. Oh, we have more debt. I should not invest in whatever. Alright, into the world, we stand alone. To the nations of the world, Aryan has a very particular meaning. The Germanic people of Northern Europe who claim the mantle with the creation of the continent spanning empire. This title is undeserved. The Germans are weak, servile people, and the unknowing pawns of Jewish masters who long ago swept in from Asia and displaced the true Aryans. The false attribution of Aryan identity has bred even to their, onto their own realm, a fact that must be rectified immediately. The Aryan Brotherhood is the only legitimate representative of the master race. The Slavo Aryan people distinct from the Asiatic German usurpers. No other nation on the planet is on our side. We must ban the idea of foreign alliances as we move forward. Sending a message. Tell me, Victor. What do you see when you look beyond our borders? Velimir did not look at his fallen minister as he posed the question, his attention instead drawn towards the map hanging on the wall of his office. The intricate cartography had been commissioned by the high priest's late predecessor, now remaining as one of the few remnants of the Wagner regime. I only see hated enemies of the uh, boreal Russes, subhumans and Zionist puppets as far as the eye can see. Victor Bezvalki's response was coldly matter-of-fact. It's more than that, victim. Consider that not a single nation on earth shares the same goals that we have. We stand alone in the struggle and only have ourselves to rely on. The high priest turned to his minister, looking him straight in the eyes. I intend to see a me loud message to the world, side in the blood of our enemies. Those who have thrown their lot in with the Jew will learn to fear us one way or another. The world in us does not take us seriously, Velimir. We must prove them wrong. Perhaps then we could start with recla reclaiming our rightful Aryan identity. Those arrogant Germanics continue to think themselves the master race. I suppose they cannot help it, of course. Their small minds are slightly quite prone to such crude delusions. Velimir gave a sl slight chuckle. Perhaps it's time we let or think let or let the mongrels know who the superior race really is. What do you think? Bezvakni smiled. I'll make the arrangements. Let the world tremble before us. Very, very good. Yeah, I did say I want more uh, equipment, so another military factory. Ooh, I do want more weekly stability, but and this one too. Ooh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, eight percent stability weekly change is going down because we're trying to integrate ors. Not great, but hey, we'll take it. We'll take whatever we can get. Oh, LBJ got second term all the way with LBJ. Decadent fools. Now is this changing by plus one point eight? We stand alone. Denounce the Masonic Zionist puppets. To the ignorant. The Third Reich may resemble an ideal Aryan state. Certainly it claims a mantle tr trumpeting to the world, its opposition to the elders of Zion and their machinations, its love for traditional morality, and its loyalty to the cause of the white race. All of this, every last morsel, is a vile deception spawned from the rot that the Reich claims to cleanse. The deep conspiracy that pervades every aspect of global civilization and corrupts all that is good did not disappear in 1933. It merely offered concessions of fake Aryan state that sells out a portion, a small portion, of the Jews in exchange for the continued domination behind the scenes of the real masters. In Aryan guise, Jews have spread their rule even farther across Europe. We have clearer eyes. We can see Germany's true nature, and we'll let the world hear its greatest, darkest secret. Iberia maintains the Siberian Council. Cool. Let's do this one first before we read about improved academic base. The Foundation of Society is her, is her writing. It cannot be overstated how the institutions that define civil life rest on the bedrock of the written word. Societies march towards hand in hand with the literature of the time that lives and dies by the high tides of writing. She sleeps when the pages are burned and wakens when a curious young person decides to scratch upon something on that palm leaf. It is a progenitor of liberty, and many spell the end of it. Our schooling and our literacy, more than that, and nearly anything else, it matters more. When it dies, progress isn't just halted, it actively begins to wither. Progress towards whatever ideal, be it racial purity, free markets, or equality, cannot survive without a pen. So, yes, our universities have expanded, but some man today is newly learning how to read and opening up Pandora's box at his writing. That is something to be celebrated. Very good. I don't read that one very often, do I? Soon. We will have no debt. Very soon. And our GDP is looking very nice at 69 billion. Very good. Yes. Less of what? More political power. Thank you. And have we already trained our soldiers 
all the way. Holy. Ooh, actually, you guys have been trained. What does Sockball look like? Artillery. Okay, I think it's. I think. I, I think we can do it. Plenty of Ubermensch. All 40. Beautiful 40 combat with divisions. Beautiful. None shall stand in our way. Absolutely none. Oh, we can do that too. Let's go and hire more foreign instructors, and then we shall probably do. Well, we can do that one. I want to do as much as we possibly can, though. The Red Burgundy. What ridiculousness it is that even the most fervent aspirants to true Aryan purity fail to meet its basic standards. The fact that the Reich is morally polluted and controlled by Jews is something that Heinrich Himmler, like us, could see. The Reichsführer SS established Ordenstadt to fix Germany's deviations. Even with this, he did not evade the pull of the Zionists. Even now, Burgundy fills its SS with non-Aryan filth and lets its ruler live fat like a Jewish banker. A criticisms of Burgundy will be a test, its final chance for redemption, if Himmler takes our guidance into account and reforms the state in the right direction. It proves these errors were simply that. If he does not, we have irrevocable proof that he too is but a puppet of the strings of the eternal adversaries. The right of ascension. Nice. 1.75 every day. Not bad. Russian reunification. We're going to do that right now. You know, keep doing that. Beautiful. Oh, we have actually no more debt. A beautiful thing, my friends. Truly beautiful. And plenty of planes to go by. Awesome. And we're done training. Oh, hold on. We're not quite done training. Train a little bit further, my boys. The matter of the homeland. Where did the Aryan race originate? Seemingly inconsequential. This is, is, in fact, the greatest question of human history. The Jews seek to control our past so they can control our future only by knowing his roots will the Aryan understand his destiny, which is why they take such pains to hide it from us. The abominable false Reich would have us believe that Northern Europe, its present location, is at homeland. What lies with trickery, what utter dreck? And we'll come back to that real quickly. Let's go ahead and grab this one. Thank you very much. The truth is that the Slavo Aryan race hails from Palestine, burnt camp in the ancient tongue. It is a in disgusting insult that this is exactly the location the Jews today claim to be their homeland. The world must know that we no longer tolerate the millennia old thatch of our heritage. In time, our armies will sweep through the Levant, eject the inhabitants, and reintroduce our people to the holiest place of all Aryan kind. You know what? We're going to even raise additional reserves. We're going to be very good with this because when we strike the West Siberian People's Republic under the evil Khrushchev, Mr. Korn, 80,000 manpower is not going to be enough. 70 factories are not going to be enough. They have 33 divisions. Actually, we're probably pretty equal in terms of divisions. But their divisions will and are inferior to our own. Good. We've made our preparations. Our eastern foes... The true Aryan homeland, look at that. Before we can tackle the issue of homeland in Palestine, the Yusuf of Reich or the Jewish controlled powers watching us jealousy from across the seas, we must also cleanse Russia, the present home of the Slavo Aryans from its present holders. The first step on this path is erasing the existence of our next door neighbors, the vermin who support to who purport to rule the region of West Siberia. Even with their superior faculties, we are doomed if we do not accurately assess the situation, our agents will gather quickly the vital information about West Siberian government, its capabilities, its intentions. We need to know every element of our eastern foes, every detail or else the Aryan race will once again live in ignorance of its greatness under the boot of those inferior to it. War on the horizon, the troops of West Russia or West Siberian People's Republic are beginning to mass at our borders. With the fortified bunkers and military operations at display, their intentions are clear. War will face our nation and we must mobilize our troops quickly if we do not wish to be overwhelmed at the front. Their forces shall test their metal, but we know better. We shall break, their shall break, their will shall break first, and our nation will tramp in the lands of Russia. Oh, anybody want to read about that? Hopefully you did. Oh, look at that manpower, or the political power. Begin the invasion. Good. Alright, so next up, you know what? I say oh, I want more equipment, and we're going to get more equipment. Returning expatriates. Agriculture is actually really good to do. Worker training, expertise is okay. Construction is okay. Infrastructure is not bad, but not really super necessary right now. More weekly manpower, and less consumer goods is not bad too. Let's go ahead and grab better agricultural stuff, and then education. Why not? You gotta save some political power too for later on. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Our eastern foes. Uh, actually, can we do anything at the beginning of the invasion? We need... Oh! Just in case, go ahead and stop training. We're pretty close anyway. Some of you guys are already done. So, you guys are killing each other, huh? Good. Very good. Look to the south. 
The Central Asians are warriors, but cannot be compared to the Slavo Aryan race to any extent. To do so would be to compare a mangy hyena to a mighty lion merely on the basis of that both consume prey. Nevertheless, they have been a thorn in our side of our people for many generations, slaughtering and enslaving us while we are blind to true glory. They must be dealt with preemptively and just in case it interfere with their expansion across Russia. As we have no interest in toppling them for a time being, a great punitive rage should suffice to make the Kazakhs fear us. Let this be an example to all who stand against us. The Aryan neither forgives nor forgets, and even insults from centuries ago will be punished as harshly as they happened yesterday. Our eastern bows, the revisionists. Good news! Our loyal agents have returned from beyond the Urals, and with them they brought the valuable information regarding the enemies our brothers are to face in the near future. Out of the ashes of the squabbling warlords of West Siberia, the Judeo-Bolshevik statelet of the West Siberian peoples has risen to become the preemptive power of the region. Led by the decrepit Zionist buffoon Lazar Kagnovich, or rightly right now under uh, Khrushchev, they intend to bring a more authoritarian form of Bolshevism to every corner of Russia they can. Fundamentally opposed to any kind of Aryan supremacy, they will surely seek to extinguish whatever lingering purity that may exist among the population. As vanguards of Aryan civilization here in Russia, it is our sacred duty to squash these filthy Bolsheviks like the vermin they are. Kagnovich's or Khrushchev's armies are well equipped and have a sizable fleet of tanks and other armored vehicles at their disposal. If the Bolsheviks think their metal monsters can stifle Aryan tenacity of our brothers, then they are in for a very rude awakening. We will extinguish Bolshevism from this land. Good. It better be so. Let's begin the invasion in about a month. Worker training is okay, scientific research. Hmm, more manpower's not bad. You lose ability when removed. Uh, I'm gonna wait to do that one. Actually, how's this looking? It's actually looking pretty good. Pretty darn good, I do say so myself. Increase, increase, increase. Scientific research? It is. Nope, we don't even have to go... We don't have to go fight them. Can we just do a general attack? I mean, our guys are 40 combat width, so overall, mostly yes. In the south, no. A little bit. Happy June, my friends. It's going to be a great year. We literally are storming across the border right now. We've lost about 1,000. They've lost 9,000. They've got the 42 divisions, which is good to know. Very good to know. Oh, we were struggling there earlier. And how is air superiority? Looking okay. Definitely looking okay. There we go. Now we're getting some air damage done, too. Or ground damage. Ground attack. Oh, we captured the Zlaus Arms Plant. The continued advance of our troops deep into the Urals resulted in the capture of the great prize of famed Zlaus Arms Plant, long known for turning out vast quantities of high quality small arms and ammunition. The capture of the plant means that we can now secure these weapons for ourselves while simultaneously denying them to our enemies. Already, our engineers and administrators are working to integrate the plant's operations into our wider logistical network, and this should be completed shortly. Although it is only in truth one large factory complex, all of which we've already possessed many, it will not on its own produce a decisive amount of material. The value of the plant should not be underestimated. It's a symbol of Russian arms production and it now belongs to us. It is, not, it is yet one more jewel in our crown. We will leverage the economic, combative, and political advantages it promises to facilitate further advances and conquests until such time as all the lands and peoples of Russia acknowledge our state as triumphant. Forward, my friends. Forward. Beautiful. And we captured, oh, a Kazakh conundrum. Oh, a Ural automotive plant. With Chelyabinsk now conquered, our men swept through the city in search of anything of value in the ongoing conflict of our neighbors. Raiding teams zip across the streets, firing at the remnants of enemy divisions, holding out in homes and buildings scattered across the urban sprawl. Caracals of gunfire echoed throughout the streets of the skirmishes a few blocks away. A unit of our men had besieged an encampment holding out in the Ural automotive plant, and upon breaching enemy defenses, the plant was pried from the few dozen men left clinging to the lives. With this major manufacturing site under our control, our soldiers now have greater access to off-road vehicles and later confrontations. This had great potential to improve our supply lines, aided in improving the speed of our reinforcements as well. The powerful engines produced in the Ural Automotive Plant are renowned for their speed and dexterity over difficult terrain, and will definitely prove their usefulness in our navigational and incursive efforts across the Russian anarchy. Truly, with the aid of the motor, this is a victory for our people and the future of Russia. Onwards, countrymen. Kazakh conundrum? Interesting. Onward to greatness, regardless. Now that the world knows the intentions of the Boreal Rus, it's time to focus on more immediate matters. We now rule but a piece of the vast Russian expanse. The rest is overrun by degenerate rats and Zionist puppets from the Ural Mountains to the Pacific Ocean. We've already come far, but we would be dishonored, or we would dishonor our ancestors and the gods if we stopped here. First, we will take West Siberia and purify the territory. Then we will march until the whole of Russia is in the hands of one true, our one true masters. After that comes the capture of Europe from the German impostors and the conquest of the ancestral homeland, the annihilation of the weak races of the Orient, and the obliteration of the Jewish citadel of America, and a thousand other conquests, until the unity of the world under one master race becomes a reality at last. Good. Work of training them. 
So, I'm not going to click, I want to do this one, but we'll read this event first. Kazakh Conundrum. While all our focus is on what lies to the east of us, it becomes very easy to forget that the newly united Kazakhstan looms to herself. No doubt the subhuman Kazakhs are hoarding a great deal of plunder just waiting to be stolen. And that means they would make an excellent target for a raid. On the other hand, it may not be wise to divert our attention from our eastern foes at the moment, and we still have a little intel on the strength of the Kazakh forces, despite the lack of information, however. Our raid could potentially provide a great way to test just how powerful the new Kazakh state really is. Shall we test our metal on the field of battle, or hold off? It's irrelevant. We could get more stability, which is not looking good right now, because we're at war. But, nevertheless, if we can win fast enough... Wow, they've lost not enough people. Then we can do the raid. So we have about nine days left. We probably won't do the raid, but we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. Because we got to get all the way to Tiamen. Uh, I don't think we'll actually get up there in time. I mean, we've been doing great so far. Like, really great. Yeah, that's not winning there, but, eh, it's irrelevant. We will go against them soon enough. I want to make sure we crush the armies of Khrushchev first. The next stage awaits. Ha! They've lost half of their industrial output. They've lost every single one of their uh, reserve men. They are nothing. And I didn't even have to really do anything about this. All, I, all we did was just march on in. That's all we had to do. That's all we had to do. Lenin's body has been captured, or strategic or soldiers have seized Lenin's mausoleum. Due to the lack of strategic or tactical significance of Lenin's corpse, the troops of our opponent abandoned his body without a fight, choosing instead to retreat to safer, more defensible positions. Oh. The political significance of Lenin's body remains questionable across Russia. Views over Lenin as a historical figure are wide ranged and varied. Our pe many people view Lenin as a father of a political movement, which has, through its stupidity and incompetence, led to the collapse of our nation. Others see Lenin as a bastion of a form of communism true to Marx and Engels, the legacy of which would betray by his heir, Bukharin. Others still see Lenin as a first in line of a succession of troubled yet utopian Bukharinist leaders and thinkers. Whatever or whatever our thoughts on this man, he is most certainly one of the most prominent leaders in Russian history, and now he is in our grasp. Four decades of history in our hands. How we integrate all these places. I would love to do more of this stuff. Ooh, actually, we need any more increases here? No, we don't. Not really. Destroy the traitor. Leave him be? Of course we're going to destroy the traitor. Are you kidding me? Russian reunification, my friends. And the Gulag's captured. As our men swept over the Arctic plains, the infamously dreadful Forkuta gulags have come under our administration. The dark complex of watchtowers, gloomy barracks, and labor camps strike a trembling fear into the icy waste. The unbelievable torture of the natural prison serves as a reminder for the wickedness of men. The enemy's men lay scattered across the courtyard, buried in debris, and torn to pieces by machine gun fire, with blood freshly painted on dark brick walls. The smell of gunpowder was thick in the silence after battle was deafening. We were in a place of immense suffering, and whilst many of our men broke down doors to scurry in and rummage for loot, Others lowered their weapons to gaze at the daunting sides that sight that dwarfed them. With Gulag's lives really preserved from the war, however, this does pose a question. Are we to close the site down forever and let it remain a relic of our barbarous past, or we must plunge our hands into the dirty realities of this war so that Russia may live on? Sometimes great men do awful things. So be it. So be it. We shall intervene immediately into Kazakhstan. The Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic, much like Khrushchev, this communist warlord state shall be clashed under Mami. Well, Mami's going to lose it. The reign of the north. And who are we? We are the chosen, the true inheritors of the earth. We are the prophets of our people, the true Aryans of the earth. It was us, the Boreal Rus, who a millennia ago populated the great plains, forests, Tiaiga, and steeps of our motherland. The ancient civilizations of the world looked upon our people with envy and named our lands of plenty Hyperborea. The land beyond the north, and a land of plenty where its people knew no hardship nor strife. Times have changed, but our people have not. At heart, the Boreal Rus are still indeed the true children and inheritors of the world. We are the true Aryans, a brotherhood that had that much right. Where they were wrong was their admiration of the Germans and those lesser blood corrupted by Jewish and Masonic interests. What else could topple such a great empire? What else? Absolutely nothing else. And we must slowly, eventually, begin to integrate these places. A new Russia. Oh, cool. Look at right this. We've destroyed his body. Cool. Vladimir Lenin, the father of the Soviet Union and architect of Russia's collapse into warlordism, shall thrive no longer as a symbol of a communist indulgence and decline. His body has been burned to ash and his ashes thrown into Russia's untouched wilds. Although many others may cling to the ideals of his corpse represented, we will see it to that that Lenin was one of the most prominent leaders in Russian history will no longer remain true. Lenin was a man, if not that, who toppled our nation for a short period of time. Nothing more, nothing less. A short lived leader with strange ideas. Nothing new. More guns, shall we? Another day, another vermin crushed. And into wonders, if you like to read about this one, go right ahead. This happens every campaign, so. On to an uncertain future. Oh, it's pretty certain, if you ask anyone here. Who said it's uncertain? It's absolutely certain to all of us. 
the high priest. As a people, our downfall started with the arrival of Christianity into our lands. Missionaries made our people weak. They burned true Aryans at the stake for their pagan beliefs and told our people that their ways of worship were wrong. And what has that led us? It is well past time to bring back the true faith of our ancestors. We cannot claim to be true Aryans if we do not bring back the ancient ways of our people. And when they were still pure, righteous, and strong. See, atheism with state religion. Lose political power, get more stability. The purest of empires. Beautiful. Uh, and before we do that, let's actually do this one. Rokuta. Because it's going to take... Three quarters of a year to get that done. Gosh darn. All right, everyone gather. The commanders about voice bellowed over the fields and hills. Sege dropped his axe upon the muddy ground, glanced at the nearby guard, and walked to the center of the gulag. The rest of the political prisoners crowded around the podium. A miserable lot sentence took the force forever. A priest of Svarog uttered a prayer, leading the, the deity to give him and his wraith strength against the dark forces of darkness. Hail Perun, answered the prisoners. Sergei could only imagine a grunt. He looked about. A flock of ravenous or ravens flew across the gray sky, spurned on by the northern wind that could even kill the strongest of men. Sergei tried to hug himself with his bony hands, wrapping them around their rags he called cloths. And one of the ravens descended to the feast on some poor soul, expired during last night's purification ceremony. If only I could get the bird, Sergei felt his stomach grumble. Rations won't be for another day. The camp commander handled a, handed a scroll to the priests. Hear ye, hear. The old Russia is dead, but we, the true Aryans of the earth, are its legacy. There was a time when the world quaked in fear upon the mention of the old empire that the Byzantines called Hyperborea. The North is home to these people yet. Us Hyperboreans. In time immemorial, the civilization was home to the bravest warriors and holiest of men. It was a land of plenty where the rolling fields ripened with endless crops under Svarag's light. Sergei had heard that speech before. Bread and promises, bread and promises. One prisoner groaned too loudly and was dragged off. Hyperborea will be the name of the new Russia, which will crush the Elsa Aryans in Germany. Undo the gra grave damage inflicted by the Jews. We are the passing creature. We are the Hyperborea. The priest raised his hands to the heavens as if calling down a thunderbolt. An hour later, Sergei returned to his labor, chopping trees and wishing for release. Hyperborea, pure, unshakable. Very good. We're doing really well here, too. Love it. We're doing actually really, really well. Someone did say before that the Aryan Brotherhood was one of the toughest starts for Russia as a unifier. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. What could be really difficult is playing as someone who does not have a focus tree like Tartarstan. Uh, so, hmm. Look at the army XP. The high priest, my friends, high priest, Aryan Destiny. Love it. Reform the Brotherhood. The blessed industry, let's do that one. Part of what made our ancient ancestors so great was unrivaled prosperity. Part of what will make us the envy of the world once more will be a renewed, a revitalized industrial base. Blessed by the priests, our industry will be the beating heart of our engine of progress on the journey to regain prosperity. Aryan destiny, my friends. Velimir took center stage before the assembled brotherhood. A faint light illuminated his head, upon which was the crown of Parkunas, the ultimate symbol of heavenly power. All line of worshippers had assembled below the podium, carrying sacrificial lamps and sacri sacred objects. The procession began with chanting lay by an unseen choir, deep voices speaking in, un in forgotten tongues. The worshippers, blonde maidens dressed in white cloth, brought forth their offerings one by one. Velimir drew the sacred hammer of Parun and brought it down upon the head of each sheep until none were left. The chanting grew louder and louder until the brotherhood itself joined in, singing of ancient glories in the wrath or at the Bellobog, who shall soon descend to earth to cleanse it of degeneracy. An hour later, the choir had ceased, and the last of the worshippers left the room. Velimir spoke, Brothers, I am honored to accept the position of High Priest of Hyperborea and all Rus. Destiny lies before us, woven by Norns of yesteryear, whose moving voices shape history. They visited me in my sleep and reclaimed that we are the heirs of the Aryan race. Our future is to the east and west, to reclaim the rest of Russia from the heathen, to liberate the west from the degenerates who style themselves superior. The Brotherhood nodded in approval, dark figures applauding the High Priest, their hearts trembling as they sensed what they were destined to accomplish, but Hyperborea is just the beginning. Perun wants us to fly southward, towards Old Palestine, ruined by the Jews. We must not hesitate and are pushed into Asia, where the ancient lands are being settled by eastern filth. And of course the north awaits once we are finished, for us to ascend to Asgard and make, take our place among Belobog. Hyperborea will encompass all. Good. Delightful. Ancient laws? Yes, please. Oh, slightly decreased coring times? Yes, please. We know that enough about the ancients to create a code of laws that would make them proud. As in the old days, we shall create harsh but fair laws that allow prosperity for all. Crime will not be tolerated and will be dealt with harshly. It is not befitting of Aryans to act ill against each other, and our punishments will reflect this. Ivan always enjoyed Malentitsa. He loved the crepes, the dancing, the music. While these traitorous Deutsch slavers had banned the holiday, the pagans decided to bring it back. Velimir's people were still pretty awful, but at least Ivan was human in their eyes. Apparently the high priest was leading the festivities himself this year, and he clearly had changes in store for the winter holiday. My apologies. My apologies. 
Thank you. A high priest Velimir led a procession of masked and costumed priests chanting jingoistic hymns as a procession of quite uncomfortable citizens trailed behind them. He led Ivan and the rest of the other procession to a large effigy, but not an effigy of the epitomous hag. It was instead an effigy of King Solomon, the Jewish king of biblical legend. Velimir and the other priests now stood upon a large podium and the high priest addressed the crowd. As the effigy burned behind him, he spoke of the restoration of ancient Slavic Aryan traditions and that the burning of the Jewish effigies would celebrate the eventual reclamation of the Holy Land by the Slavic people. The Holy Land? What was he talking about? The Slavs were from Moscow and Kiev, not Jerusalem and Bethlehem. With his speech concluded, several screaming goats and lambs now sacrificed to the true gods of the Aryan Slavic, uh, Slavic Aryan civilization. The priests began dancing around the burning effigy, singing those same awful hymns again. Ivan watched in horror as these madmen twisted this wonderful tradition of Ivan's youth into the name of the gods. Where was the music, the joy, whatever these pagans were celebrating? It wasn't Mal Maslentitsa. The Sunday of forgiveness was now the Sunday of hatred. Hmm. No matter what. No matter. We must continue our march forward. There goes the one. Over a hundred billion in terms of GDP. And no debt. Beautiful. So, six a month. 4.5. 4.25. 5, 6.5. Very good. Beautiful. Call to the world? Yes. It is time to announce to the world our manifest destiny. We are not afraid to let the world know that it is us, not Germany, who are the true Aryans. It is us, not those fake Aryans and degenerates that shall be the inheritance of the world. Let the degenerates of the world quake in their boots. They shall know of Hyperborea's ascendance and return. The catch, though. Marat listened to the birds heralding the dawn outside his cottage as his tea kettle whistled. Marat and other Tatars around the village had heard weeks ago of Hyperborea's claim to the region, and of course they all lived in fear of a few weeks. However, things had got quieted down to the relatively remote, remote village, had seen nothing of the mysterious nationalists. But as Marat poured his tea as he did every day, a deafening sound lay claim to the morning silence. Motors roared to the village as the wheels of trucks dug into the dirt road leading through the hamlet. Stepping over to the window and parting his curtains, the old tartar watched swastika and blazoned vehicles roll into town. The lead truck's door was thrown open and out of the passenger's seat slid an officer who approached the first person he saw. The bearded captain pointed at a young woman watching intensely from her porch. She froze as the man began speaking to her through and though Marat could not hear the conversation, it still shook him to the bone. After a curt exchange, a woman nodded towards Marat's front door. A knock came soon after, and Marat reluctantly went to answer it. Pulling the creaky old thing open, he found himself standing face to face with the officer. With a gravelly, gravely, gravelly voice, he began to speak before Marat could get a word out. Are you in charge? Yes, what it seems to be the issue, asked Marat. On the orders of Velimir, a natural pr preserve will be built nearby. Well, well, that's lovely. What's that got to do with us? We'll you'll need help from the locals. Well, all right. Where is it to be built? Here. The old man froze as he noticed the officer had cocked his gun. After a split second of pregnant silence, a shot was placed directly between Tatar's eyes. Marat was dead before his already cooling corpse struck the ground. The Russian turned to the other soldiers as they piled out other trucks. Burn the houses. If the subhumans don't leave, make them. By Velma's word, we will leave this rotten den to the ashes. Aid of the gods. The cross had been pulled down from the roof. Thrown into a great pyre as many other false icons, a humbled wooden statue of Christ himself had been hacked to pieces and scattered into the flames. In their place rose monuments of, to gods of old, and the walls were etched swastikas. At the altar stood a monument to Perun, the lord of the thunder himself. The Zionist den was no more, and this was now a house for the Aryan, or soul they told Leonid, an attendant to the small church. Ever since he was a child, he had come to this church every Sunday in the darkest of times and the brightest of days. When Russia consumed itself, he prayed to Christ for this most distant of kin to be safe. When the Aaron thundered into his town and slaughtered all those who refused to kneel, he prayed for God to guide those martyrs to heaven. They told Leonid that if he did not bend the will that Perun, his blood would stay in the very church he spent so many years in. In a moment of weakness, he agreed. The grief of betrayal ate at him. He had felt he had turned his back to the true savior of mankind. Judas possessed his soul to serve the devil and his minions. But even then, with that pain born deep in his heart, the light of the true God shined bright. The God of Moses, the God of the Jews, Leonid now is now like the first Christians in Rome, forced to conceal their beliefs, but still faithful deep down. And even as the pagans assembled his church altar for the blood of another blood sacrifice of his neighbors, even as a knife dug into the chest, they screamed, he prayed. Lord of Lightning, take this offering as a gift to you, the priest began, and the others repeated, but Leonid prayed to another. Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, may have mercy on them, the sinners. Give them, give unto them what they could not give to others. And in the night, over a house humble worship, a thunderstorm approached. The gods are at war. Very good. Very, very, very good. Reform the Brotherhood, though. The Brotherhood is a useful tool. Although misled, their ways of thinking can be remedied with a few modifications to their mantras. For example, we will not emulate any longer. Our people need to know that the Boreal Rus are the true people, proper errands of the world. Those bloated degenerates and Germania, our true enemies, are still the Jewish devils and Masonic leeches. But we must open our brother's eyes. The roots of their corruption run deep indeed. Even our ancient home in the Levant is infested by, the, by these influences. It's time to begin teaching our wayward friends, for they have much to learn. And New Russia. Oh, uh, we already read this one, I believe. 
but I will be right back. Righteous cleansing. Parun's hammer glistened in the moonlight as drops of blood fell upon the white floor below. Velimir turned from the mingled corpse and walked over to the balcony's edge, observing his empire Hyperborea. Dozens of feet below, pious laborers toiled away their struggles so that by the final day the fl flag of the new Russia would fly over Germania. Velimir gazed at the stars like angels they observe us. Civilizations rise and fall, but they remember old Hyperborea may Belobog and illuminate the righteous path. They are here, my lord. Velimir turned to the door, and guards brought forth eight prisoners. Velimir recognized them, former Brotherhood members, petty generals, traitors. He pointed to the body lying next to him. Heathen, do you know why that was? Or do you know who that was? He addressed one of the captives. No, no, your holiness. I haven't seen that man in my life. He said, a pathetic husk of a man, once probably an Aryan, now playing the fool. Velimir shook his head in disapproval. You lied, discipline of Moses. They fear me more than death. I have a deserving fate for those who would undermine Hyperborea. This man was caught yesterday trying to cross the border into Muscovine. Identification revealed him to have been a former agent of Wagner's, set to venture into the forsaken land of Germania and weave lies about my just rule. The prisoners exchanged worried glances, and after being subjected to Svarag's flame, he confessed to being deployed on the task of the orders of fellow brothers. Some prisoners begged for forgiveness. One pleaded for a fair trial, and a fair trial you shall have, answered Velimir, as he brought Perun's hammer down upon the head of the traitor. The prisoners scrambled, only to be caught and held by the guards. Germania is full of degeneracy. There are none worse than those who pretend to be Aryan, proclaimed Velimir, and all who associate with the West are traitors, Jewish plotters, heretics, and will be treated as such. The minds will absolve them. 55% nice. Are we at war yet? Oh, we are at war. Oh, we did go to war with these guys. I totally didn't realize that. Healers of the gods, though. Alexei had been getting sicker and sicker the last few days, with the old clinic shutter due to hair sing or whatever the soldiers always were shouting about. There were only one place to go for treatment, the church. The priest there was a weird man who dressed in scary costumes and said scary things. His parents explained to the scary priest man that Alexei was sick and needed healing badly, and the scary bloody man nodded and started doing one of his scary rituals. He took a bowl of blood and dipped his right hand in it and reached out to touch Alexei's face. Alexei wanted to run away, but his parents had him trapped as a parents or the priest man painted Alexei's face in icky blood. After saying some prayers, Alexei didn't really understand. He declared that Alexei was healed, but Alexei didn't feel any better. That didn't work, Mommy. Daddy, I want to see a real doctor, Alexei protested in between coughing fits. The scary priest turned around and his weird smile placed with something far angrier. Now, now, young man, don't... You don't want to see a doctor? They use modern medicine, which was invented by the Jews, to weaken a poison Aryans. Your parents haven't been feeding you any of that Jewish filth, have they? His parents shook their heads, and the priest's arm smile, a smile returned, and he seemed to relax. Alexei was allowed to wash his face off, and his parents took him home, where he returned to bed. Ivan had gotten the same thing last summer, and the doctors had made him feel all better, and yet the scary priest man didn't help at all. Alexei would have gone, or had thought about how scary the priest man made him feel even more, but he was feeling sleepy. So sleepy. Have faith, child. Alexei. And he's having he's medical issues? Is this the Tsarevich that Tabby was looking for all this time? No, he's too young. Uh, Trials of Redemption? Ex expertise. Lambs. Uh, sacrificial lambs. I don't like that one, but... T Trials of Redemption, maybe. Many of her brothers have been deemed too lost to redeem. Deemed too lost to be de redeemable. Tossed into camps where Ar Aryan brothers now waste away, waiting death, shunned by the people and missing the chance to be part of a renewed Hyperborea. There are many in the camps who have long since been er seen the errors of their ways. Many beg for mercy to be released so that they can participate in the renewal of the Aryan race and liberate it from all of its enemies. We cannot simply allow people freedom with blatant leniency, however. We would be, be no better than the degenerate Christians and Jews if we released prisoners with no penalties. Our ancestors thankfully knew a solution. To prove their worthiness, those who petition us for a release must face the trials of redemption, a series of challenges to weed out the disingenuous and weak from those deserving to be released as Hyperborean Aryans. Their sacrifice will be great, but their reward, salvation, better industrial expertise, and cost us five million USD. No matter. The cost is not, is not, there's no cost too high, not too, cost too great for us. To get our Aryans home. And in the proper places. Cool. My apologies. My pronunciation of words sometimes is just not very good. Getting .05 a day, huh? Wow, that sucks. Kazakhstan. How are we doing against these guys? The Brotherhood needs blood? Hopefully not too much. Five divisions, 70,000 losses. So be it. We shall appear a right of ascension once again. Beautiful. Truly beautiful. Kazakhstan. Ah, degenerate state. We're literally just walking in. They can't do anything against us. Beautiful. The two cosmic forces. In our universe, there are two forces. Human forces. They compete. One is, of course, the spirit and the will of the true Aryan people, we Boreal Rus, who will have for a millennia fought off other creeping plague that infect our Earth. They are, of course, the eternal Jew. Most of the Earth lives on as if there was no war of will or culture being fought. The degenerate fools bask in their ignorance as Judaism further lobotomizes humanity as we know it. Only by our enlightenment can we save ourselves. Only with, an, with knowledge can we protect ourselves from the ever-present creeping presence. Even when we cut military spending, we still have overwhelming firepower to fight our enemies. 
promote national patriotism. To serve in the armies is a fight for our very existence as a people. You, men of Hyperborea, are the chosen of the chosen. You are our best, true Aryans all. It is honor above all else to serve as you do against those who would seek to destroy us, both from, without, and within. You are first and last line of defense. You are the protectors of the north. You are the shepherds of the new order, and more. You are the tools that carry out the will of the Aryan people. You are the brave fighters who will safeguard it. Your determination is second to none. Your fighting prowess is unmatched anywhere. You are the soldiers of Hyperborea, and you and you alone give the Aryan people hope. Slightly decreased scoring times, good. And even without us looking, without us monitoring too much, we have defeated the filth of Kazakhstan. Beautiful. Truly beautiful. If we need a train, so be it. A broken hero. Alex was greeted by floodlights. But it, before he could compose himself, a pack of dogs bit into his legs. He fell upon he fell upon frozen grass and saw a group of officers unloading their other cadets from trucks. His arms scrambled until they caught something fury. He twisted and whimpered a thud. The hounds backed off. Alex stood only to be knocked out by a crowbar. His last vision was that of a rabid soldier standing over dead meat. Alex was awoken by a firing squad. He grabbed his head. Memory betrayed him. Flashes. He remembered a village, patrol car, a shovel. The barrack door opened and came the priest. Alex stood at attention, but his spirit was dying. Before he knew it, he was dragged off to the center of the camp. Alongside a thousand other degenerates, a man pointed a gun at Alex and ordered to him to run ten miles in the truck, lest he go to Neifelheim. He struggled and heaved, encouraged only by cracks and thuds, unworthy cadets purified by lead. Alex looked at the barrack and in the distance for a moment he thought a woman stood there begging him to defend home Alex cried but the days came and went with no relief a thousand Slavs became hundred walking dead and they envied failures every morning they before the barns feeding an officer would read them charges failure to pray failure to achieve Aryan devotion to appreciate the high priest justice Alex had gone used to the beatings too thirty lashes for dissidents a thousand for conspirators the last trial arrived but Alex did not know how much time had passed since he was brought here his mind was occupied by faint memories of defending those he could not remember he was told to run across twenty feet of burning coals the final task to be considered worthy of serving in Aryan infantry he witnessed many men fail scream burn and die on his turn he flew even thunder in the distance could not silence the priest. An unending lecture of the defending the Aryan race. As Alex passed the test, he could only hear the shouting of the priest, of race, and until past and present became one. His until his body could last no more until he smiled and remembered. I defend the Aryan race. As he should. Minus nine billion. See? I mean, you leave it to the Aryan race. There will be no debt. Debt is but an inconvenience for the Aryan. Desionization and demasonization. Every even after all of our works, Jewish and Masonic degeneracy still lurks within our great nation. Those that remain, the few that remain, flock to where the words can be heard most. Academia. It is a grave oversight of our part, allowing Jews and their Masonic stooges to continue to educate our people. Literature written by Jews and those corrupted by their influences is not only taught, but even even read by our wider populace, who are totally unaware that they are being lobotomized. We must act quickly and decisively. Nothing short of a total purge of our academia will save us now. Any books that could corrupt our people must be burned, and most of our current educators will have to be rid of. It will likely be costly to the state, but we must do this to for the good of our people. For the cause, no sacrifice is too great. Academic base will begin to slowly worsen. It is a necessary sacrifice. And actually, if we look at our academic base, it's only going up by one, so even if it goes a little worse, whatever. Improved jet fighters? Yes. Absolutely. Improved jet cast. Oh, man. Don't tease me with a good time. After this, we shall do. Cast off the shackles. Now is the time to break the, the millennia of chains cast upon our people. Any Jews still in hiding, leeching off of our society, shall be caught like the rats they are. Any secret societies, especially those of the Masonic Order, are to be crushed. The Christian Church, which is nothing more than a front for the martyr Jew, is to be crushed, to be replaced by a new order. These There will be resistance, of course. There will be Aryans who are too tainted by these corruptive influences and will never be able to rise above their generosity. They will be purged, for they are nothing more than the carriers of the fatal Jewish disease. Only when we cure the people of the illness that they will be able to see the chains that have shackled them. Once they are free, Hyperborea will be reborn and we prove our poverty rate once again. Search and destroy from an excerpt from the Divine Directive 645Y. And... So, consider the advantages, advantages of a pure mindset. A pure Aryan mind cannot be corrupted. Therefore, it is always true to the side of the good. A pure mind is absolved of sin. May it enter Valhalla. A pure mind is, in fact, immortal. Its host cannot be slain by bullets of hate or tools of a degeneracy. Thus, it is an unfortunate reality that many of Hyperborea's Aryans are tainted by the shadow forces of Zion. Their lives spread like wildfire, coming from secular texts that attempt to hide under the guise of progress. All law enforcement units, in addition to local military elements, are to conduct staged and precise raids against all holdings in their designated regions. See attachment. Raids are meant to Locate and destroy subversive texts and heresy. Conscript able males for purification camps. Seek out anti-priest or high priest evidence and arrest as appropriate. 
Destroy property of degenerate races with extreme prejudice. It is the High Priest's hope that the Svarog's light will guide our brave warriors in the search for truth. Remember, all officers, that this is a pure quest. Some of you may have doubts about the acts you are ordered to execute. Dispel these doubts. Inability to confront your inner chorts will result in corporal and capital punishment. The Aryan mind must remain pure. We who judge. Only us few Aryans who are totally committed to building a new hyperbury for all Aryans are fit to judge the rest. Our state was built upon the visions of one man, and one man can only spread his teaching so far. The rest of the people must be guided with a strong and stern hand and watched over by us at all times, lest they deviate from what it means to be a proper Aryan. It is not ideal, but like a good father, we must look after the dual being of our, all of our Aryan children. And happy 1970, my friends. Happy New Year. Another year, uh, more purges must begin. And actually, to reunify the motherland, it has to be a year later on. So be it. No matter. The Aryan Slav. Jewish, Masonic, and German propaganda would have the world believe that the true Aryans of the world are bloated, decaying peoples of Germany. That is, of course, false. All those groups want to push a narrative that is simply not true. Their intentions are obvious to us. These fools will spot anything to slander our great race. Those who are educated know that the German Aryan is nothing more than a subhuman specimen who migrated out of their dung holes in East Asia. The true Aryans, us, Boreal Rus, are the chosen peoples with our rich heritage. It was us who were forced north from the Levant, chased out of our homelands by the eternal barbaric Jew. It was they who failed to exterminate us, and they who looked upon paradise with jealousy which they harbored for centuries. You tell me many of our people do not know of our past, our struggles, and our greatness? Then it is time for them to be enlightened. More manpower? Minority protections? Hmm. Interesting. Excerpts from the Dura Divine Directive. 32324Y. And it is thereby necessary for the betterment of the Aryan race and the preservation of order to meticulously scry the holdings of our Slavs for any form of dissent. High Priest Vilimir extends his blessing upon all law, law enforcement units and hereby gives them permission to do whatever is necessary to maintain the peace. Remember, none are exempt from Parun's judgment. The natives of Russia plot in the darkness, in coalition with the Jewish and Masonic conspiracies, to overthrow the blessed empire we have revived from the dust of history for the sake of our Aryan descendants. All laws pertaining to the protection of laws, or, or Slavs, Jews, and any other pure race are void and null. Any and all crimes against degenerates is to be completely legal, enforced by all police units. Personnel found in compliance with degenerative elements are to be ex executed on the spot. The practice of public executions shall return to the settlements, supplemented by torture against the greatest of enemies, traitors. The Aryan mindset is still dormant within much of the Brotherhood, but the High Priest believes that practicing social responsibility will awaken it. All indigenous units in the military are immediately to be subjected to corporal punishment for failing to meet Aryan standards of proper devotion. Punishment shall include lashing, attacks by dogs, and decimation. Punishment will be deemed necessary and sufficient only when the unit confesses to any and all crimes and pledges of their undying support to the Aryan race after said decimation. To reinforce inferior mentality, all native populations are to be accounted for, and able-bodied males present pressed into service and immediately subjugated to above purification. Steel masks and broken minds. What we must do. The Scorched Camp. Our foreign policy is simple. Bar the Boreal Rus from any and all foreign influences and liberate our ancient, ancestral homes of Palestine. If you've been paying attention to our history, you'll know that it was from the sands of the Holy Lands that our people originated after their trek west from Asia. Here's where our first civilization was built, and here where the Jews dealt us a crippling blow, forcing us from our lands. We understand that it's not feasible for us to simply march back and take these lands by force of arms. This, that isn't to say how we can't begin infiltrating our home now and pave the way for our return. Beautiful. More guns, good. Support weapons, even more beautiful. Anything here? Nope, that is fine with us. Sometimes I get, forget that this is actually a game. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Actually, academic base is getting worse. That's not good. Going to buy one a month, whatever. Central Siberian Federation. Ha! Huh. Into the atomic page? Ooh, we could do that at this point in the, in the game. We can improve research facilities, whatever. Our ancestral homelands. Ah, Han, how great our ancestral homeland was. Great cities rose from the sands, their stones twinkled in the sun, and their progress in technology was unrivaled in the world. Water was plentiful, for the ancient Aryans knew how to maintain efficient waterways and dig wells, complete with pumps. Their prosperity was unmatched, and the people lived in harmony, wanting for naught. But then the Jews came. Those scums saw what people had, and out of spite they invaded our people, who were peaceful and ignorant in the ways of war, for they never fought themselves. 
They were the uncivilized barbarian Jews had no such qualms for they were used to being using force as a means to an end. Like a wave of death, they fell upon our people and destroyed our great cities. Their great cities salted their fertile croplands and destroyed their irrigation systems and wells. It is the Drew Jews who drove us from our homelands. Even two thousand years later, it was the Jews who kept us from returning. We have a dream, though. Some day we shall return to our homelands and reclaim what is ours, and we shall bring upon those who live there unimaginable destruction and death to avenge our people. Order forty four. Oh, the Dale of Show Up rises from hell. The way of the warriors to be found in dying. Ancient lands. The priest bowed and exited the stage. Yimala Nayaf smiled to the new brotherhood as he ascended the stairs. A massive map of the Afro-Eurasian continent that titled Greater Hyperborea decorated the wall. The high priest drew a long stick and traced a path from Africa to India, Europe, and Russia. We Aryans are products of eons. We have existed since time immemorial, before Abraham walked the earth. When Moses spilt or spilt or split open the sea and saved his vile race. We were forging civilizations in the north. When the Church of Rome first breathed heresy, we were there in the shadows. And when the hordes of Islam marched across the dunes, we feasted in Asgard with our forefathers. Yet there was pause as the brothers clapped in agreement until Yemelianov raised his voice. But we never forgot the ancestral land, what they call Levant, Jerusalem, and we've always known as the birthplace of Arianism. It is our legacy, the Norns tell it to me, to reclaim it. Even if we must incite nuclear war, threaten the degenerate Germans and cowardly Italians passed through the smoldering ruins of Caucasia and the mountains of Turkey. We will reclaim the Holy Land. The brothers jumped up and the room erupted in applause. Yemen and I have chanted, Hail Perun! We will do as the ancestors proud. For we must. Stake righteous claims. The tragic story of the first Aryans had been completely forgotten by the rest of the world, thanks to the Jews and Masons. It is well past time we officially stake our righteous, legitimate claim of the Levant. We expect that most of the world will laugh at us, calling us insane fabricators and warmongers. This is fine. It will merely expose the most corrupt in the outside world. We know our history and we know the truth. We, the real Boreal Rus, Aryans all, are in the right. We know what happened to our people and the only one solution will right this ancient wrong. I love that we get claims on all this stuff. That's awesome. But our grand plans? The High Priest. Shook hands with the marshal, whom he called Perkunas, the true Aryan destroyer of filth. He brought forth maps of Palestine, the lands of lands where history was forged and the blood countless of, of countless faiths split. He praised the innovations of a military. Whoops, my bad. Uh, my apologies for not finishing that. I accidentally let time go on. My apologies. My sincere apologies. I did not mean to do that. And I will make sure that I will pause for each event. Under Perun's light. Work towards rebuilding our realm has exceeded expectations. There have been rough patches, of course. Not all Rus people could come to terms with the fact that they are Aryans, the true inheritors of the world. The many others had to be cold, simply because they would never accept our people's history as legitimate. It's a shame, but we've done what we must for our people. The ancient splendor of Hyperborea has not yet been rebuilt. We have so much to do before we can ever rival the wealth and power of our ancestors. Thousands of years of generosity must be undone, and many of our cities, cities and towns still need rebuilding. Still, we must remember that our ancestors had hundreds of years of peace and prosperity to get to what they were. Much of, much have been done in a short amount of time. The spirits of our people look upon us with all not disgust. My apologies for that. I do. I, that's the first time that's ever happened where I accidentally let time go on. I was kind of getting into the uh, reading, but my bad. My apologies once again. Obviously, you guys can go back and read it if you want, but I sort of cannot. Um, will you guys kill each other, please? Actually, you you, you are killing each other. 1939. So we're roughly about the same amount of divisions. Oh, Far Eastern Imperial Realm is going to die here. Good. Very good. Look, it's only the Aryans that can be on top of things like this. These degenerates, they can't even kill each other properly. Pitiful. Into the atomic age, Russia has long been regarded by powers near and far as a backwater. A vast steep full of peasant farmers and decades of revolution, collapse and civil wars done little to challenge this perception, but this will soon change. With the resources, human and otherwise, that we have acquired during our campaigns of reunification, we possess the ability to begin a nuclear program. The power of the atom is a great equalizer in the game of geopolitics, and we shall now act to harness it for ourselves. A young warrior. Len Leon first killed a human at the age of 12. He had been chased by a bully to the lumber yard where he outmaneuvered the boy, returning to his hovel covered in blood. When the enemy soldiers arrived, he spied on them from the woods, and when one had gone to piss, he slit his throat with his father's shaving knife. He gunned down the rest of the unit from the covered bushes, but never shed a tear. Leon killed his father at early age of 16 when the old man tried to take his prize lure away. The fiddle shot was heard by none. From then on, Leon wandered the earth as a soldier without borders, seeking fame in hamlets, stealing food and women and ammunition and all the treasures a warlord desires. One day, Leon heard of a trial to purify himself, so he strolled over to the new authorities, whose hands he shook, whose task he passed with Aaron's accuracy. So Leon became Leon the Slayer, and he led many raids on the enemy, so that by the age of 18, he was a famed warrior in Samara. 
He wielded a battle axe gifted to him by a priest of Perun, which he used to decapitate, decapitate degenerates. When the high priest spoke of Hyperborea, Leon looked back at the past and decided that he was of divine descent. How else to explain his success? So he became a warrior of Perun, chosen by fate to bring ruin upon the other races, which he did with a smile and began calling himself Casibor. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow when we shall reunite all of Russia under Hyperborea and purge the land of filth. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.